evening as we are, let us pray. We are very grateful, almighty God, for granting us an opportunity to listen to your word. Speak to us, for we are waiting. For this is our prayer of faith, in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Shall we be seated? Praise God, church. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It is a wonderful morning that the Lord has given us. Just in case we have anyone who is visiting with us for the first time, my name is Pauline Kanuthu. I am born again, and I am delighted that the Lord has continued to be gracious to me and for allowing me to be here even as I bring the word of God to us. This month, we will be talking about the Holy Spirit. And uh, because last Sunday we had the Youth Sunday, we did not start off that. But then from now to the end of the month, we will be talking about the Holy Spirit. And today, we are talking about the Holy Spirit, our comforter. Tell your neighbor, the Holy Spirit, our comforter. That is what we are talking about, and we thank God for allowing us to start on a journey, even as we take time to reflect on the faithfulness of God and of his goodness in our lives. Life sometimes has painful uh, challenges that we encounter, and uh, we are always put uh, to face to face with life's difficulties. And perhaps even as we sit here, there could be some of us who are going through very difficult uh, circumstances, difficult situations. And I don't know what has troubled you lately. Is it the sickness or the death of a loved one? Could it be financial wars or unemployment? Could it be a marriage that is not functional? Or even children who have chosen to go wayward, even after you have shown them which way to follow? Could it be maybe the loss of even a job or something that is precious to you? I may not know, but it is good to feel comforted this morning. And I don't know what is the last time that you felt comforted. But we are being reminded today that the Holy Spirit is our comforter. In John chapter 14, this is a farewell uh, discourse that uh, was shrouded by the mystery of Jesus approaching death. And it is important to note that it's never easy to speak of death without making your listeners uncomfortable, and especially if you are their leader. The disciples of Jesus Christ were troubled because Jesus had been with them. He had guided them, he had guarded them, he had taught them, but now he was going to leave them. And three times he had actually predicted his death. This was not a very easy uh, situation for the disciples and uh, in actual fact they became very very troubled we will remember the account of Peter at one time when he called Jesus aside and he began to rebuke him and to ask him what are these things that you are talking about and this was his way of dealing with the discomfort of Jesus death it's important to note that as long as Jesus was with the disciples, they had a comforter. No wonder in verse 18 of John chapter 14, Jesus says another comforter will come because Jesus was a comforter to the disciples. And Jesus was the disciples physically present comforter who solved all their problems. Anytime they encountered a storm, Jesus calmed the storm for them. Anytime they went through uh, situations of hunger, he provided food for them. Whatever the situation they encountered, Jesus had a solution for them. But now he is living. So there were many questions that were going through their minds. 
so they were troubled. But Jesus assures them that the vacuum of death has a present comfort. And the Holy Spirit is going to strengthen their hearts even when they see the Son of Man handed over to be crucified. It's important to note that the Greek word for comfort that has been used is variously translated. If you read so many versions, you will realize that word, both in verse 14 and verse 26, uh, verse 16 and verse 26, it talks of a counselor, a helper, an intercessor, an advocate, a strengthener, and a standby. But all this is meant to mean God's continuing presence after the accession of Jesus Christ. In other words, comforter is the one who walks alongside you. A comforter is a companion. Praise be to God. A comforter is a companion, one who walks alongside you. And many times when we share the words of the grace, we mention the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. In other words, the Holy Spirit is always present with us. Praise be to God. And uh, when I think about a comforter, perhaps some of the questions we'll ask is what will the comforter do? And the comforter will transform. He's the one who convicts us of sin. He convicts us of righteousness and judgment. So the work of transformation, you know, because God always desires to transform us so that we take on the image and the likeness of his son, Jesus Christ, so that wherever we are, as we take the name Christians, indeed, we are Christ-like. And it is only the Holy Spirit who is able to transform us inside out. Praise be to God. The Holy Spirit, the Comforter, testifies about Jesus Christ. Anything that we have got to learn to get to understand about Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit testifies about Jesus Christ. It's also important to note that the Holy Spirit, our Comforter, teaches us. He teaches us the will of God. He makes known to us the word of God. As we read it, the reason as to why we are able to understand, it's because the comforter teaches us. And even in very challenging situations and circumstances of life, the comforter reminds us what we have been taught so that we can be able to overcome those very situations with the comfort that comes from God alone. I don't know what comes to your mind when you know that you have one who walks alongside you. And uh, perhaps one of the big things is that you get to know you are not lonely. You are not alone. What if the one walking alongside you is God? It basically means that uh, the nature of the journey we are in requires you and I to walk with God. You cannot walk alone. Walking alone basically means that you are destined to failure, to frustration, to pain, and to such situations. But walking with the Lord basically means that eventually, regardless of the circumstances and situations you overcome, no matter what, you are more than a conqueror. When we know that God walks alongside us, it also tells us that God cares. He cares enough to watch over us. Praise be to God. God cares enough to watch over us. And I love the fact that the Bible says that he who watches over us does not sleep, neither does he slumber. So we I'll encourage this morning that he who watches over us is God. He cares enough to watch over us. When we know that we have God walking alongside us, then we are reminded that God loves us. And he loves us so much to want to be with us in all situations and circumstances of life. And we are also reminded that this journey 
is also aligned to God's mission and purpose of transforming us, of testifying, and also of teaching us so that all said and done, his purpose is achieved through our lives. Therefore, brothers and sisters, as we take time to reflect on the Holy Spirit, our comforter, we need to be reminded that first and foremost, we are embraced. Praise be to God. Tell your neighbor, you are embraced. We have just said that you are not alone. You are not abandoned. We are not helpless. Neither are we hopeless. And the Bible reminds us in the words of Jesus Christ that wherever we go, the Holy Spirit is with us. So we are not orphans. Praise be to God. And you know, the ancient concept of an orphan was actually deeper than we would want to think about right now because orphans were exploited. You know, their inheritance will just be taken by anyone without even their consent, and they would not even have anyone, anyone to support them or even speak on their behalf. And no wonder the comforter is also an advocate. We also reminded that orphans, they were vulnerable, very vulnerable to life challenges. They had nowhere to go. And it was a very dehumanizing state. But then we are reminded that we are not left as orphans. The Holy Spirit comforts us in times of our grief. He gives us peace in times of fear, and he strengthens us in times of weakness. And this basically means that for those of us who have faced the death of loved ones, there is a resource in the Holy Spirit. Praise be to God. There is a resource in the Holy Spirit because he comforts regardless of the situation you have gone through. And whereas death represents darkest moments and darkest hours in our lives, it basically means that however difficult and dark the circumstance and the situation you are going through is, you are comforted because however insignificant it could seem to other people, the comforter cares enough to comfort, to encourage, and to journey with you. Praise be to God. And true comfort comes to strengthen us so that we are able to face life with courage and we are able to keep on keeping on so that we do not give up in the process. Unfortunately, sometimes we look for comfort in areas and in places where that comfort is not found. We may want to find comfort in alcohol, we may want to take comfort in drugs, but you will only, it will only be for some time, but then it will go away. You may also want to find comfort in relationships. No one else can give you the right comfort other than the Holy Spirit, our comforter. Sometimes even relationships turn out to be toxic. Is it so? So the only comfort we can find is that which that comes from the Holy Spirit, our comforter. And as God breathed life into the first humans in the book of Genesis chapter 2, Christ breathes the Holy Spirit into us we who believe in him. And therefore, we can rejoice that we are embraced. Praise be to God. Tell your neighbor, you are embraced. And secondly, because we have the Holy Spirit as our comforter, we are enlightened. We are enlightened. We are not living life as a people who just walk around aimlessly, not knowing what is going to happen, not knowing what to expect, as though we are expecting or waiting for an accident to happen or something to catch us unawares. No, we are enlightened. Why? Because one of the characteristics of the Holy Spirit in the, in the, in the Gospel of John is truth. So you cannot think of comfort outside truth. Praise be to God. You can never think of comfort outside 
truth. Worldly comfort is delusional. And that's why we are talking of things like alcohol, beer, and all those. We can think about money. You know, you will have it now. Tomorrow you may not have it. And even if you have it today, it cannot give you peace. It may not give you the necessary comfort that you require because money can only do so much. Praise be to God. You know, when you think about the positions we have, when you think about power, all that is delusional comfort. The only true comfort comes from the Holy Spirit. And one way that the Holy Spirit comforts is by giving us right teaching. And through giving us right teaching, we are never misled to falsehood. We are never misled to falsehood. We are able to discern the false teaching. No wonder even in our times when cults are on the rise, we were just talking about shakahola and all that and it's not yet over. Is it so? And there are so many other teachings out there. Only the Holy Spirit is able to teach you that which is right. Only the Holy Spirit is able to remind you what the Word of God says so that when confronted with whatever situation and circumstance, you can go back to the Word of God and draw your courage, draw your confidence, draw your comfort from the very Word of God. It is through the Holy Spirit, our comforter, that we are also taught to worship in truth and in spirit. Praise be to God. So that our worship is not directed to men, but our worship is directed to God and God alone. Praise be to God. So we are enlightened. And because we are enlightened, we come to the place of worship with confidence that we have come to meet with the only one person who cares the most and who loves us the most. Praise be to God. Worldly comfort is delusional. But with the coming of the Holy Spirit, our comforter, we are enlightened. Thirdly, because the Holy Spirit is our comforter, we are entrusted. Tell your neighbor, we are entrusted. It's important to note that comfort fills the heart and calms the soul. And if there is any comfort zone worthy the name in this world, it can only be the comfort of the Holy Spirit. You know the way sometimes we tell our friends, get out of your comfort zone. If there is any comfort zone worth any mention, it can only be the comfort that comes from the Holy Spirit. And comfort is a communicable attribute of God. Comfort is a communicable attribute of God. God, God's other name, if we were to use another name for him, would talk of comfort. Praise be to God. Unfortunately, many of us have settled for uh, pseudo comforts, but it is important to know that knowing God is actually knowing comfort. To know God is to know comfort. And God comforts us so that in the same way, we can also go out there and comfort others. In other words, because we have the Holy Spirit as our comforter, we are also charged to become agents of comfort. Praise be to God. So we are entrusted with the responsibility to become agents of comfort. You can read the words of Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 4. So today, brothers and sisters, as we congregate here, as we celebrate the Holy Spirit, our comforter, we are reminded that because he is our comforter, we are embraced, we are enlightened, and we are entrusted. And as we worship him, specifically today also being Mother's Day. Is it today Mother's Day? Yes, today being Mother's Day, then we can celebrate on this Mother's Day. We can celebrate the motherhood of the Spirit of God. Praise be to God. Because the Bible reminds us that it is through the Spirit of God that we are born in the family of God. 
It is through the Spirit of God that we are born in the family of God. We are born of water and spirit. Praise be to God. So if there is anyone we can celebrate today as we celebrate motherhood, we can also celebrate the Holy Spirit, our comforter, through whom we have been born in the family of God. Praise be to God. So as we say Happy Mother's Day, we can also celebrate God through whom today we get to know the true meaning of motherhood. Comfort is your portion, child of God. Regardless of the situation and the circumstance, comfort is your portion. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.